Hey, it's Ryan with this week's Mille Lacs Fishing Report. Water temps on the lake are in the mid-70s. It's early August and we are definitely in midsummer patterns. I'll get started by going over a couple of concurrent conditions out here. Uh, over the last few days, what I've noticed is we had quite the midge hatch, especially on the east and the north ends of the lake. I don't think that's going to have too dramatic of effect. I haven't really noticed it with my fishing, but it's just something to take note of. As far as other things go, we definitely have had a lot of rain up here, like a lot of the rest of the state has got over this summer. And that's raised water levels on Mille Lacs. We started out low this spring, so from my observation, I'd say we're back to normal right now. Probably about average for where the lake should be. One last topic is the walleye regulations. A couple days ago that we were informed that walleye regs were going to open up a little bit mid-August. I'm not sure exactly if that's been solidified yet, but it sounds like we're going to be able to keep two fish between 18 and 20 inches. So we're definitely looking forward to that. The walleye bite has been excellent throughout the season out here. So we're definitely expecting to put some keepers in the boat here coming up real quick. I'll start things off with the muskies. You know, there's two main bites that I've been focusing my attention on. And one is going to be on deeper weed lines. Uh, most of what we've been doing is fishing the deeper weed lines. A lot of times we kind of focus those on those around sunrise or sunset. There's a few techniques that we use or a few lures that we use. The number one, the mainstay out here is just bucktails. You know, what I like to tell people to do is throw the biggest one that you can handle. So generally what I'll do is I'll throw double tens but if that gets to be a little bit too much, the smaller bucktails definitely work and will definitely catch fish. The other thing I tell people is when you're picking out colors on bucktails, I don't get too specific on colors, but I definitely go one of two different directions based on the conditions. So if I'm dealing with overcast or early morning or late in the evening, I'll typically go with something darker like a black, black and silver, something along those lines. If I'm doing it midday and you have bright high sunshine, I'll go with something really bright and gaudy. So those are kind of the directions I go on the bucktails. As far as other techniques, one of my all time favorites during the midsummer period is throwing glide baits. When fish get lethargic and lazy, especially midday during the summer, sometimes you'll notice some lulls in the action. One of my favorite things to do is to pull out a big glide bait and work it over those deep weed edges. It just seems to draw attention from fish that otherwise wouldn't be looking at other baits. So the glide bait is always a good option at this time. Lastly is topwaters, and topwaters simply get bit certain days. So it's always good to have a topwater handy, especially morning, evening, you know, those overcast days, they can work really well. And don't be afraid to throw them in windy conditions either. Topwaters will definitely catch fish in the wind and in a chop like I have behind me. The second pattern that works well on the muskies is the deep fish. There's a lot of muskies in Mille Lacs that move out into deep water during the summer. And those fish are eating tulipy primarily. So what you can do, one of the easiest and most effective ways to catch those fish is simply trolling large crankbaits. A lot of times the standard size crankbait is somewhere around 10 inches and you troll them pretty fast, about three, four miles an hour or so and you cover a lot of water. Generally what I do when I'm trolling crankbaits for muskies out here is I'll go out to the mud flats and I'll fish the edges of the flats and the points of the flats and I'll definitely focus in on areas where I see a lot more bait, especially tulipy. If you're on an edge of a flat or a point of a flat and it's got a lot of tulipy around it, you can almost guarantee that there's going to be some muskies in that area. Moving on to the walleyes, there's a variety of different techniques and areas a guy can catch walleyes at this time. I know of bites going on the rocks, the shallow rocks, the mud flats, and the gravel bars. There just seems to be a lot of fish in the lake and they definitely seem to be feeding. So we've had a great season since opener all the way up till now. We're still catching fish out here throughout the daytime hours. So if you're looking to get in on some walleyes, Mille Lacs has them and pretty quick here, we're, it sounds like we're gonna be able to keep some. The techniques that we've been using for the most part in my boat have been bobbers and leeches. That's, that's really been the mainstay the last couple of years in my boat. Uh, 
the bobber and a leech is just a classic out here on Mille Lacs. It's hard to beat. It, they just get bit day in, day out under a variety of different conditions. What we've been doing and where we've found the most active fish has been up shallow. Um, more shallow than most people would expect, especially for midsummer. A lot of our fish have been coming in 8 to 12 feet of water on the rocks. We've been cruising around with the live sonar, marking fish, throwing bobbers and leeches at them. Uh, a couple feet above their head, we're fishing them pretty high and the fish just come right up off the bottom and grab them. It's an excellent way to track fish down and get bit throughout the daytime hours. If you're looking to go out a little bit deeper, looking to do something different, if the live imaging isn't really your thing, you can still go out to the gravel bars and the mud flats. On the gravel bars, generally what I recommend doing is going right up on top of them, about 24 feet of water. If you can find rocks around there, that's gonna make things better on the gravel bars. But throw your bobbers and leeches out there, they'll definitely get bit. If you're going to the mud flats, find the tip of the flat, you know, or just cruise up and down the edge until you start marking some fish on your sonar and drop your bobbers and leeches on them there. You're sure to get out bit out there. There's a lot of fish on all three of those areas. The bobbers and leeches really aren't your speed. There's a variety of other techniques that'll work. I've talked to guys over the last week that are catching them on spinners and crawlers, lindy rigs and leeches. I've talked to guys who have got them on jigging wraps and jigging plastics with the live sonar. So there's other ways of catching them. One technique that really shines at this time of year and continues to work all the way through the dog days of summer and into late September is lead core. There's a big change going on out on Mille Lacs at this time, and it's an annual change. It's something that we see every year. And that is the amount of bait fish that are moving from the shallow structures and they're moving out into the main lake. And what happens is the young of the year hatches in the spring, they grow up a little bit in the shallows, and as soon as they get to about this time of year, they move out of those shallow areas and you see big clouds of them out in the main lake, out on the deeper structure. And what that'll do is it'll change kind of what the fish are keyed in on. This has a really dramatic effect on the walleyes. The walleyes, I know a lot of guys like to troll bigger crankbaits, especially in the month of June. They'll, throw, they'll troll the thunder sticks and bandits and reef runners out in the open water areas. But once you get to this time of year, using lead core and real small crankbaits like little Selmo hornets or little shad wraps, will become much, much more effective. Those fish become keyed in on the smaller bait in the lake, and you'll just find that your success rate with the smaller bait is just exponentially better. So lead core at this time, going out to the mud flats or the gravel bars, or simply trolling out in the open basin is just a very popular and very effective technique for the next couple months here. If you're gonna do the lead core thing, my best advice is maintain a certain speed. It's really important to get that speed right. It'll keep your baits at a certain level. Generally, I go about two to 2.2 miles an hour. And the other thing I try to do is maintain a pretty consistent depth. If you're gonna go over the tops of the flats, just stick to the tops. Don't, don't break wide out over the side. If you're gonna go to the gravel bars and fish the edges, try to stick to the edges. It'll make things a lot easier for you. If you are gonna go up and down structure, deviate a little bit high. The big thing with lead core is you don't want your baits dragging bottom too much out here because if they're dragging bottom, they're typically gonna get fouled up and that's just gonna reduce the amount of bites you get obviously, but it can also create some really nasty tangles. Lastly is the smallmouth, and what I'll say about the smallmouth is there are fish scattered all over. Uh, we're definitely seeing some fish starting to school up. We're seeing bigger schools over the last few days, but we're definitely seeing fish all the way from three feet of water all the way out to close to 30 feet of water. Uh, we've used a variety of techniques over the last couple of weeks. Uh, some of the better ones in my boat have been either the Ned Rig, which is just the number one tried and true when in doubt, pull Ned out. That gets it done just day in, day out. Ned Rig is something you always need on your boat when you're fishing smallmouth on Mille Lacs. The second is going to be a little bit different, and that's going to be the spy baits. Spy baits have been working really well for us in my boat for a few years now. And the big key with the spy bait is my recommendation Cast it out and reel it in slow. Don't do anything funny with it. Don't try to adjust speeds or twitch the bait at all. 
just cruise it in at one single speed. You can throw them either by specific pieces of structure, such as large rock edges or boulders. But a lot of times what I do is I just go to the top of a structure, fan cast it around. You'll be surprised what you catch on those. The third technique is swim baits. And the swim baits, I do something similar with the walleyes. You know, a lot of times in the spring, I'm using swim baits that are closer to that four inch range, like those easy shiners, the four inch easy shiners. But when I get to this time of year, I downsize it and I go with more of the shorter, fatter profiled three inch baits. And I keep them on the same size head, either a quarter or a three eighths ounce head, but I fish them a little bit deeper. A lot of times I'll be fishing 12, 18, maybe a little bit deeper water with them, targeting real specific pieces of structure, individual boulders or small little isolated rock piles of large rock, that sort of thing. But those will definitely get bites and they tend to get really big bites. So the swim bait's always a, a factor out here throughout the season. It's not just a spring and fall thing. It'll definitely catch you big fish during the summer. To narrow down the smallmouth areas a little bit, what I would say is don't be afraid to try up shallow, especially if it's calm, hot, and sunny. It seems like those fish will go up and check out the tops of the reefs at times. But what I would say our best depths have been have been anywhere from about six to 18 feet of water. It seems like we were doing a little bit better, a little bit shallower this week, but most consistently, the most consistent depths have been about six to 18 feet and using any one of those techniques. If you're looking for one really big bite, don't forget the top waters. You can use the whopper ploppers or walk the dog style top water. It's a great way to catch a big fish, especially under fairly calm conditions. And lastly, with the smallmouth, you know, like I always say, look for the large rock, big individual boulders, areas on the reef that have the largest rock. That's where you're going to find the fish. They're not, they might not always be directly on top of those rocks, but they're always going to be very close by. So look for that large rock, look for it in those depth ranges, use those techniques and you'll catch fish out here. I hope these tips help you out. Good luck fishing and have a great weekend.